Good morning. Have you ever wondered why we're here? I mean, if the only reason that we are here is to get saved, is for just our salvation, why wouldn't God just take us right on to heaven when we make that decision? Maybe it's because he's got something else for us to do. That's what today is about. That's what our lesson is about today. It is about being committed to the mission. Now, what mission are we talking about? Well, it's actually the Great Commission. Remember that Jesus, when he was being, he was ascending up into heaven, told his disciples that their job was to go into all the world. More accurately translated, it's as you go into all the world. Preach the gospel. Teach everybody. Baptize them. Do it at home. Do it in your immediate area. Do it everywhere. And he's going to be with us. That That's the Melinda uh, paraphrase of the Great Commission. Well, Paul has something to say about this in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 17. Um, he talks about our fulfillment of our mission, the Great Commission. So here it is. He starts out by saying, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness, and one confesses in the mouth with the mouth, resulting in salvation. This is the message of the gospel. It's the confession and the believing. Um, when we confess that Jesus is Lord, we are saying that Jesus is Lord. He is the one in charge. We're not. Our desires are not. The things of this world are not. The political party we belong to is not. Our job is not. That Jesus is Lord. And then believing means that we are acting upon that confession. We are taking what the Bible says is true. And we believe this truth about Jesus. We believe he's the son of God. We believe his sacrifice uh, paid for our sin. We believe that by his resurrection, that sin is defeated, death is defeated. We believe that Jesus is the son of God. We believe that he is the second person of the Trinity and is thus, thus God to us also. That's what it means. Now, for the first century Christians, this was sort of revolutionary because a confession like this could get them killed. Basically, in their time period, Caesar, Caesar was God, and people confessed that Caesar was the one they worshipped. And Christians were called, no, not, not to confess Caesar, to confess Jesus Christ. So we're continuing on, verses 11 through 13 of Romans chapter 10. The scripture says, everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame, since there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, because the same Lord of all richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, this is good news. Paul's world and our world today is a very deeply divided world. While our world may be deeply divided with ideologies, Paul's world was deeply divided along religious and racial lines. The Jews did not believe that the Greeks were the children of God. And the Greeks could not for the life of them figure out why the Jews were so determined that there was only one God when the Greeks believed, well, there were many of them, they're, they're all around. God made sure that we understood that everyone can call on the name of the Lord to be saved. That it does not matter who you are. That there is no distinction with racial and cultural lines. That instead, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is a big deal. So how do you show that? How do you show that everyone is valuable in your world? The gospel belongs to all people. It doesn't belong just to our little groups. It doesn't belong just to our little church. It doesn't belong just to our little state, our little nation. 
The gospel belongs to everyone, and everyone can be saved. That's part of the Great Commission. That's why in the springtime we give to North American missions, and in the fall we give to Mississippi missions, and it, it at Christmas time in the winter, we give to foreign missions. That's why our church packs boxes for Operation Christmas Child. That's why our church operates a food pantry. We are reaching out in the name of the gospel to all of these people. All of these people are valuable. Sometimes we have to meet a physical need in order to meet a spiritual need. Because it's it's kind of hard for some people to listen to the good news of Jesus if they're hungry. If they don't have adequate shelter. Our mission as the Great Commission is to bring the gospel, the good news to everyone. Now just think how important and how different our world would be if we took this super seriously. And really worked to share the gospel to everyone around us. Well, listen to what Paul says to conclude this section. How then can they call on them they've not believed in? And how can they believe without hearing about them? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they're sent? As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard. And what is heard comes through the message of Christ. We are proclaiming the word of God every day. Some people are called to preach, and that is their, their calling in life. But all of us are called to proclaim the gospel. For some of us, this means that we give. For some of us, this means that we share. For some of us, this may mean that we do one-on-one -on -one witnessing to somebody and tell them what Jesus has done for them. For some of you, it might even mean that when you see this video, you share it with someone who needs to hear it, who needs to know that Jesus is Lord, that he died for all of us, he died for you, he died for me to take on our sins. God raised him from the dead. He was raised from the dead to show his triumph over sin and death. He's in heaven now, interceding for us at God's right hand. If we call on him, if we believe in him, we will be saved. That's the commission. That's our mission as Christians, to share this good news. Share this good news with somebody today. And let's be thankful while we do it. I'm thankful for all of you who are watching. Let's pray. Lord, help us to be thankful. Help us to share your great commission. Help us to share Jesus and the gospel with everyone we meet, whether we do it in words or deeds. In Jesus' name, amen.